W and W prime uh, represent a single state, such as W1, W2, and, and W2 and W3. And R is a transition matrix which satisfies the normalization condition. And uh, the off diagonal element, uh, and, uh, only the uh, diagonal element can be negative, and other off diagonal element should be non negative. And this is a requirement on transition matrix. We now uh, describe uh, the entropy production rate uh, in terms of scattering processes. So, uh, the entropy production rate is a written like this. This is, I think, uh, we already show in the yesterday's talk. The first term is entropy increase of bath, and the second third is the entropy increase of the system. And we uh, introduce a detailed bath condition, which uh, claims that between uh, <coughs> to a microscopic state, if the system is in equilibrium, then there is no probabilistic current. This is same as this relation. And if uh, there exists several heat buses, we require uh, the detailed balance condition is imposed on each uh, single bus. Using uh, detailed balance condition, so if the system satisfies the detailed balance condition, and the production rate can be written as it. Okay, now we move to our main problem. The first one is a finite speed processes. Uh, as you know, in the textbook of uh, some dynamics uh, or undergraduate students, there are two key quantities to uh, characterize heat engines. One is efficiency. This is a, this quantifies how much energy is converted from heat to work. This is a very important quantity. And its maximum is given by a current efficiency. Of course, uh, in this case, uh, we assume the passive heat bath, not the active one. <coughs> and the other is power. Power quantifies uh, how quick we can extract the work in this uh, psychic process. Of course, uh, we uh, want uh, to have a high efficiency and relative power heat engine. This is very good. But, however, it is uh, strongly expected that uh, these two are incompatible. So, high, uh, it is strongly expected that high efficiency implies uh, less power. So, if we increase efficiency, then power decreases. This is a very natural expectation. But Although this is strongly expected, uh, there has been no general proof. And even worse, a much more uh, basic, easier problem. Does finite power engine attain the current efficiency or not? It appears almost a trivial question. This is almost, it appears very impossible. It's trivial. However, this basic problem has still been an open problem. One reason is that uh, the general framework, uh, for example, the sum dynamics, uh, conventional sum dynamics, uh, does not uh, prohibit the co uh, coexistence of uh, color efficiency and finite power. Because conventional sum dynamics uh, does not have the notion of speed. So uh, if uh, there exists a finite power engine at color efficiency, then uh, this engine uh, does not contradict to some other thermodynamic law. For example, the second law does not prohibit this type of engine. And in the linear irreversible thermodynamics, this is also a very established framework. And in, in this case, we consider a stationary system, such as a, a, some electric transport system. And uh, we uh, consider a system in a linear response regime, and we <coughs> calculate uh, the power and uh, efficiency in the particle current and heat current using heat in these currents. And even in linear response regime, if uh, there exists uh, some uh, time, uh, time some field which breaks uh, the time reversal symmetry, such as the magnetic field, then the coexistence of current efficiency and finite power is not prohibited by uh, linear uh, universal standards. This uh, fact is uh, 
pointed out in this paper. So uh, after uh, this uh, paper, many researchers uh, investigate. So uh, is it indeed uh, prohibited uh, or not? They, uh, but of course there exists uh, no general uh, frame, uh, no general uh, result. So uh, many researchers first investigate uh, for basic ana <coughs> analysis of a specific models in the response regime usually with probable of asymmetry. Then, uh, these papers arrive at the same result. In analysis on concrete models in linear response regime, then all models uh, <coughs> do not attain an efficiency if the system has finite power. This is very expected part. So again, we face that uh, <coughs> the current efficiency indeed implies and zero power. However, we, uh, we lack the proof. And so more a uh, general problem, the general trade-off relation between power and efficiency has completely been elsewhere. <coughs> to overcome uh, this uh, problem, uh, we derive general trade-off relation between uh, efficiency and power. And as its corollary, we show that uh, the current efficiency indeed implies zero power. So uh, <coughs> we discard our setup. We assume that uh, the dynamics of engine is described by the classical Markov process and uh, the canonical distribution is invariant. This is a physical requirement. But we uh, do not uh, require more. So if the system uh, uh, have a broken type uh, symmetry, but our data is applicable. Uh, in other words, uh, the system uh, does not satisfy the detail balance condition, but our data is applicable. And this our result is applicable to non-linear response regime and transition process, not only to the stationary system. To uh, derive our result, we first uh, focus on two quantities. First is the heat flux between the heat bath and engine. So uh, this, this heat flux J quantifies how quick the energy is exchanged between bath and engine. And the second key quantity is an uh, the production rate. The second law claims that the production rate is non-negative. But we find a more, uh, more stronger bound than the second law, as this. This is the most important uh, result in the theoretical aspect. Here, a theta is a coefficient depending on the state of the system whose uh, so definition is uh, presented later. The physical meaning of uh, this inequality is very clear. If we want to uh, exchange energy between the heat phase and the system quickly, then uh, this uh, quantity becomes large. So there must exist much heat dissipation. This is the physical meaning of this inequality. If uh, there exists uh, multiple heat buses, then <coughs> The summation uh, of the heat, uh, heat current is taken over all heat buses as this. Now, we can see the fact that the finite power and current efficiency is incompatible. Because finite power engine should finish uh, its cycle process in a finite time interval. So its isothermal processes uh, should also uh, be uh, finished in finite time interval. And in this uh, ISO processes, uh, the engine should exchange the energy between heat bus with finite amounts. So, using uh, the previous inequality, there uh, must exist entropy production loss in this ISO process, which uh, <coughs> suppress the efficiency from Karnova. This uh, and this. <coughs> Uh, observation can be uh, qualitatively uh, characterized as this. Here, uh, tau is a uh, cyclic time and w is a verb. So, left hand side is a power cell. Theta verb is the average of theta and beta L is the inverse temperature of the cold bus. And eta is the efficiency and eta C is the current efficiency. So, uh, this. Well, okay. Excuse me, can you go back to the previous? Okay. Uh, Smaller than what's the, yeah, what's the physical meaning of J? 
J. Uh, uh, J is the uh, spe uh, <laughs> speed of the exchange of the energy between heat bath and uh, engine. What's this? Speed, uh, the amount, uh, this is the energy current between uh, these two systems. So uh, this uh, J quantifies how quick the energy is moved from, for example, bus to system or system to bus. Uh, we we'll, uh, write the explicit definition later. Okay. So uh, this inequality can be uh, visualized as this. And the vertical <laughs> axis is power and the horizontal axis is efficiency. This inequality claims that only this orange region is possible and uh, outside the gray region is uh, prohibited in principle. So uh, this uh, clearly shows that the large uh, high efficiency implies the large maximum power, and in particular, at the current efficiency, the power uh, goes to zero. This is the desired property we want to derive. Here, uh, but uh, in fact, uh, there are a similar type of inequality uh, taking this form. The inequality with uh, theta equal theta 1 uh, holds in general system. But uh, this relation, uh, this inequality is a little uh, weaker than the second one. The inequality with theta equal theta 2 is uh, satisfied if the system satisfies Dittelbach's condition. But uh, this uh, inequality is stronger than the first one. Okay, now uh, we move to the proof uh, of this inequality. We, uh, to derive this, we introduce dual transition rate, which we've seen yesterday. Dual transition rate are defined as this. Indeed, satisfy the uh, invariant uh, condition, uh, so normalization condition, because of the invariant condition of the canonical distribution, as this. And using the dual transition rate, the interproduction production rate can be written as this. This equation is also seen in yesterday. Now, uh, heat flux is defined as this. The heat flux, uh, or this, this is the same as the heat rate in you, the previous, uh, <coughs> in yesterday. The heat flux uh, is defined as this. And using mass equation, uh, we can write heat flux as this. And using normalization condition, we can transform this <coughs> expression as this. Here, uh, delta EW is energy fluctuation from uh, its uh, average energy. Here, uh, we uh, remark that this is uh, till the dual torsion rate. Mm -hmm. Now, before going to the proof, we prove a lemma for, on the carbon driver divergence. Carbon driver divergence, D, it is a kind of distance between two distributions. This quantifies how uh, far uh, the two distributions with each other. And the definition is this. We here uh, add and subtract uh, the terms whose sums are the same. The advantage uh, to adding these two terms is that the sum itself is non-negative. This term can be both positive and negative, but this term is always non-negative. So uh, usually a uh, non-negative uh, formula can be bounded in the quadratic form. And this is also the case in <laughs> this formula. This quantity uh, can be bounded below by uh, this uh, quadratic form. Here, uh, <coughs> This uh, relation can be uh, derived by uh, di uh, differentiating this and calculate the step by step. <coughs> so I skip. Uh, the C0, coefficient C0 is obtained uh, only by numerically. What is the reason for the second quantity? Second quality, uh, this one. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, we assume this uh, relation. Oh. So the two distributions have the same sum. So uh, this summation is zero. Now, we move to the derivation. This is a heat flux. 
So this is a <laughs> this is a dis uh, derived equality. Now we uh, divide and uh, multiply the same uh, quantity. Now we apply the Schwartz inequality. Schwartz inequality is this inequality, well-known inequality. Then we obtain this uh, <laughs> inequality here. Now we can see that this uh, formula uh, takes the same form on the right hand side of the previous lemma. So uh, we find this inequality. We here use the previous lemma. Then we can see that this is entropy production rate itself. So we arrive at the desired inequality here. Here, uh, theta 1 is defined as this. This is a kind of uh, a number of average jump times energy fluctuation. And this is a kind of activity, uh, if you know uh, this term. Uh, this is not uh, the uh, active matter, but activity is defined in a different, uh, different field. Uh, theta 1 uh, is a similar to dynamical activity. We, uh, here I use that uh, the diagonal term of the uh, dual matrix is equal to the original matrix. So there is no uh, dual matrix here. This is both. Both of them are original transition matrix. So in the okay. whole calculation, temperature yeah. doesn't play in the hmm? temperature. Doesn't temperature. Play. Uh, temperature is, uh, of course, uh, we, for example, uh, dual transition rate depends on the temperature because uh, Wait. Mm. Because, uh, for example, the air transition helps. It depends on the temperature data. So your your theta one. Yep. Uh, in part, uh, this quantity, of course, use uh, depends, on, depends the on the state. But uh, for example, we can bound uh, this quantity by, for example, the maximum of the possible uh, jump. So we have a uh, much a bound of upper bound of theta one, independent of the state, but it's detailed. Uh, Okay. Can bound it with uh, some constant. Yeah, bounded by uh, some uh, uh, no, no cost because uh, this depends on the energy fluctuation, but uh, it bounds some uh, reasonable quantity. But uh, the more, if you want to become the inequality tighter, then we, uh, it depends on some uh, quantity, which also appears in energy fluctuation rate and current. Okay. So power, power R transition matrix, but R sh uh, should have a canonical distribution invariant. So R should uh, have some dependence on temperature. Okay. Mm -hmm. So C depends on temperature. Yeah. And as we see, uh, we see some uh, a concrete expression of uh, theta uh, in some specific situation later. We next consider uh, the case with detailed balance condition as this. In this case, the dual transition matrix becomes the original transition matrix. So heat uh, flux can be written as this. Here, uh, this term is energy difference. In the previous case, this term is energy fluctuation. This is a, <laughs> a apparently small but a big difference. Then entropy production rate is also written as this. So uh, entropy production rate is also written as this. We uh, use this form to uh, derive the non-negativity of the entropy production rate uh, yesterday. And uh, considering a similar manner, we find this inequality. Uh, compared to this previous original one, uh, I'm sorry, previous one, uh, without the balance, the question is in this previous case uh, 0 0.896 blah blah blah, but in this case 1. So this band is uh, tighter than the previous one. And using uh, a similar discussion, 
we find a similar inequality. Now, in this case, theta 2 is a, a similar quantity, but we use the energy difference, not the energy fluctuation in this definition here. And this is, in the previous case, this term is energy uh, fluctuation, but now uh, this term is energy difference. Now, we uh, list some general property of theta. First, uh, the important point is that both theta 1 and theta 2 are proportional to the system size. So uh, this inequality is meaningful bound, even in the sum, okay? So in the case of detailed balance, yep. your uh, microcanonical uh, micro ensemble cannot have transition between the state. No, not, not the microcanonical, but canonical distribution, hmm? right? Uh, yeah, uh, canonical distribution. I mean the, the state, yeah, the, the internal state between there's no transition between. If the state is canonical distribution, yes. But in general situation, of course, there are exist some functions. Okay. So uh, the <laughs> detail balance condition claims that if the probability distribution is canonical, then this uh, probability distribution does not change. So. But uh, in my discussion, uh, we do not assume that the probability distribution is in canonical distribution. In general, this is not a canonical distribution. This is a, <laughs> because we, our process is finite speed, so uh, we cannot expect that the probability distribution is in equilibrium. Usually, uh, this differs from the canonical one. So, of course, there must exist some uh, transition. Is this the answer? Okay. Okay, so uh, now go back. And uh, this inequality is meaningful bound, even in uh, macroscopic case, uh, in some equilibrium. Because uh, this quantity uh, J, theta, and uh, the production rate is proportional to system, uh, system size, volume, V. So uh, this is a new uh, thermodynamic uh, even in meaningful, in some equilibrium. Uh, so this inequality can provide a novel, a meaningful prediction. <coughs> and post, uh, under the natural systems, the theta 2 is calculated as this. This uh, term is proportional to the kinetic expectation value of kinetic energy. And interestingly, in linear regime, linear response regime, theta 2 becomes a uh, thermal conductivity. And in this case, our inequality becomes equality uh, for the second inequality. Uh, <coughs> in other words, uh, the heat current, uh, the absolute value of the heat current is equal to the square root of theta times and production rate. So our uh, result is tight, best one, in linear regime. Now, uh, we finally de uh, derive the first relation between power and efficiency by using the obtained inequality. We consider the situation that uh, the, the engine absorbed uh, from Q, heat QH from the hot heat bus and then release, uh, emit the heat QL to the cold heat bus and we extract the work W. We consider this cyclic process. First, only the thermodynamics uh, shows this relation. The entropy increase can be written as this. This relation is some relation. Uh, it, uh, we do not, to derive this, uh, we do not use the stochastic sound dynamics of previous result. And eta, eta c minus eta is calculated as this. This is also some dynamic relation. We now consider uh, the obtained result for general case. By uh, integrating this uh, inequality with time and using Schwarz inequality twice, then this uh, the time integration of heat uh, and we <coughs> consider the square is bounded above by uh, this tau uh, theta bar and it will increase because the time integration of heat uh, flux is equal to the heat itself. So uh, this inequality claims that the square of the sum of QH and QL is bounded above by the time tau, uh, average of theta, and entropy increase. 
For inserting uh, this uh, relation to this algebraic relation, we find this inequality. And uh, because QL is non-negative, we find this. This is equivalent to the desired trade-off relation between power and efficiency. Now, uh, <coughs> we comment on the related uh, result. A classical speed ring server. In this uh, problem setting, uh, this is different from the trade off between the power and efficiency, but very related problem. We uh, <coughs> consider a situation that two probability distribution, uh, the initial distribution and the final distribution, are given. This is this. We uh, denote them by P and P prime. We want to transform from P to P prime quickly. And what we want to consider is the cost of quick state transformation. What quantity prohibits the quick state transformation? This is a problem. And ordinarily, this type of program is investigated in the isolated quantum systems. And for example, Mandel's quantum relation, uh, which is a <laughs> well established inequality, shows that the energy fluctuation uh, is the cost of quick state transformation uh, for isolated quantum systems. And there are many attempts to extend this idea to classical systems, but uh, its physical meaning, uh, uh, what, uh, the cost, the physically meaningful cost, is not uh, found. But uh, 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 following a similar idea to the previous uh, power state trade of relation, we obtain this uh, classical speed drift inequality. Here, L is the, uh, the distance between the distribution, uh, initial one, and final one. The definition is very simple, Di just taking the absolute value of the each term difference. And sigma is the total end production, and a tau is uh, <laughs> the time interval from initial to final, and A is, uh, a bracket A is the average dynamical activity. Yes. This is a bit of the, like KL divergence. KL divergence. Uh, this yeah. is not KL divergence. Uh, see, of course, this is a, a, of course, uh, this is also a kind of distance. Yeah. So this uh, works a very similar role. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we, we fail to derive uh, this, this inequality with KL divergence. Okay. So, <laughs> so we divergence. use this type of distance KL instead. KL divergence is more common. More common, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, kill divergence is in fact not the distance because this is not symmetric. <laughs> so there are many other, many, many uh, types of distance, but in fact this is easy to treat in this calculation. <laughs> so I use this distance. We expect that there are other, <laughs> many uh, other distance satisfy a similar inequality, but uh, we fail to derive. Here, uh, dynamical activity is defined as this. This is the average number of jump. So, the physical meaning of activity is the time scale of dynamics. Because this characterizes how frequently the jump occurs. Let's consider the one-dimensional lattice on a single, part <coughs> single particle and one-dimensional lattice. Activity counts as if particle uh, jump to D here to here, we count plus one, but if particle jump from here to here, we also count plus one. Let's compare to the current. If we count plus one from the jump, <coughs> the, in the jump from here to here, then we should count minus one from here to here. Activity always counts plus one. And this quantity appears in many uh, contexts. One is the grassy dynamics. Uh, it is a candidate to characterize the grassy transition. And it is also expected to characterize the non-equilibrium steady state. <coughs> so uh, dynamical activity is an established uh, quantity in non-equilibrium physics. So now we can uh, <coughs> see the physical meaning of this inequality. L is the distance, length between initial and final state. And A is the time scale of dynamics. So end production. End production is the cost of quick state transformation. 
So uh, this inequality and previous inequality uh, both uh, show the same result that entropy production is a cost of a quick process. The division is also very similar. We, should co we want to consider this quantity, the absolute uh, value of the time derivative of each for the distribution. Using a mass equation and normalization condition, we find this relation. And then we consider the same, uh, we apply the similar technique, and using Schwarz inequality, we find this. And then, uh, uh, in this case, uh, we consider the uh, case with detailed bands. Uh, without the detailed bands case, uh, we uh, exchange this to the dual structure matrix, and we put some uh, additional coefficient C0. And we uh, and we here consider the short inequality here again, and then we find that this is a desired term, two times activity time and production rate. We now integrate this uh, by integrating this, we easily find the desired result, basically, and very similar to the previous derivation. Okay. Now. We move to the second part, relaxation processes. In this uh, part, we consider the, uh, the relaxation process with a single heat bus. So, uh, if we leave a state at the no equilibrium state, and then we start. We do not have any time dependent control parameter, so this state just relaxes to the equilibrium distribution after infinite time. But we focus on the middle of the process, from t equal zero to t equal tau. So both the distribution needs a equilibrium. The equilibration is not finished. But because this process is relaxation, this entropy production must be a non-zero, uh, must be a positive, strictly positive. And we want to so we want to derive the lower bound of entropy production in this process. We denote this entropy production by a sigma a bracket zero tau. We first show the derived result. This is a, a result of uh, this part. So usually uh, in second row uh, the right hand side is zero, but we find that. The distance, and uh, this is a carbon level divergence, distance between the initial distribution and the final distribution bound the end production rate. If the process is relaxation, so uh, the end production rate in relaxation process is bounded below by uh, the distance between initial and final state. We uh, first say some signature of this inequality. This inequality is satisfied only in relaxation process. Of course, if the process is quasi-static, and the production rate uh, can be zero, but this quantity is positive. So, uh, in uh, general, in generally, this inequality is not satisfied. Only in relaxation process, we find this inequality. And interestingly, uh, equality holds for tau equal zero. This is trivial one, but tau equal infinity is also. <laughs> This in, in tau equal infinity, this inequality becomes equality. So equality is, is achieved in at least two points. And this inequality is not satisfied in discrete time Markov chain. Uh, we consider continuous time Markov process, but if the time is discrete, this is not satisfied. So why why is tau equal infinity is the same size? So in this equilibrium? Uh, tau equal infinity is equilibrium. So we can easily calculate initially also at equilibrium. Uh, if that uh, initial equilibrium case, then of course the state doesn't change, so this uh, is always zero equals zero. If initially it's not equilibrium. No, not the equilibrium. The final state is equilibrium. Yes. Then it cannot be zero. Cannot be the yes, because uh, this time this is finite, this is finite. Okay. And equal equality is satisfied okay. in this case. Uh, potentially the fix. All parameters are time independent. Relaxation, no time dependence. 
It's only the distribution changes. So this is a uh, numerical simulation <coughs> for the very simple three-state model. In this case, uh, we plot the, oh, <coughs> the entropy production and uh, the scale divergence between initial and final. As you see, and at tau equal zero, the equality is achieved. And but at tau equal infinity, <coughs> the equality is also achieved. And because this uh, representation is highly anomalous, this uh, <coughs> the lower band closely uh, reaches at the <coughs> into production rate, into production. But uh, the inequality, this inequality is satisfied at all times. Sorry, why in the immediate time it should start equality? Uh, this, uh, this, in this case, uh, in this case, uh, this, uh, the two, this ah, two states okay. is locally equilibrated. Okay. And then uh, this interpretation occurs. This is this type of the tricky situation. And into production uh, in the relaxation process uh, with detailed balance, uh, I'm sorry, I, I should say that this relation is satisfied only in the system with detailed balance. Maybe I failed to mention this. This is very important function. In this case, uh, the inter production is written as this. This is a very known relation. So, uh, the uh, obtained uh, inequality can be uh, ex also expressed as this. Uh, in, the case, uh, in information geometry, the k divergence serves as the square of distance. So uh, if this is a length of square, 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 if this is equal, then this is a uh, Pythagorean theorem. So the angle is a <coughs> right angle. But this, uh, the, is a, this, the inequality is this direction. So uh, this inequality uh, claims that, that the P0, P tau, and the infinity equilibrium one, then this angle should be larger than right angle in the sense of information geometry. This is the uh, information geometrical meaning of my uh, inequality. So uh, this, our uh, novel inequality gives a possible relaxation passive. This is a state space. And this is the equilibrium one, and this is the initial state. Then second law claims that the relaxation path should be in this circle. So uh, this path may be possible, this path may be possible, and this path may be possible. All these passes uh, does not contradict to the second row. But our inequality claims that only the realization path should be in this small circle, and outside is prohibited. So this path uh, is possible, but both of uh, these two passes are prohibited. In principle, by our result, not by second row, but by our result. The key relation to derive this uh, novel bound is a novel expression of the inter production rate. Inter production rate can be written as this. This is not a new result, this is a very uh, well known part. In fact, uh, <coughs> this uh, inequality, uh, this right hand side can be written as this, but this is equal to the time derivative of Shannon entropy and energy. Uh, so this is the introduction. Uh, <coughs> we drop a uh, bit uh, better, but uh, but this can be. Uh, we have a new variational expression of this uh, <coughs> introduction rate. If Q is equilibrium one, then because equilibrium distribution uh, does not evolve, so this <coughs> equal to this one, but. If we take other distribution, <coughs> then this is less than this quantity. This is the meaning of <coughs> the variational expression. Here, uh, Q minus T is the probability distribution evolved backward in time. And the time evolution is given by the same functional matrix as T. So uh, that mean, <coughs> we draw some uh, interview picture. This is a P and this is a Q. So uh, this is a uh, two relaxation passes. P evolves uh, four directions. So P after the short time delta T, P goes here. And Q goes to back backwards, so Q goes to this. And then we consider the difference between the, the solid line and dashed line. Then uh, this 
the difference between these two is maximized when Q is here, equilibrium. Otherwise, uh, this is less than <coughs> the this case. This is the frame of this invariant expression, uh, as a variation expression. Applying uh, this uh, expression, we can easily derive the relaxation uh, bound. We set uh, the P tau as a Q0. And we consider time evolution from 0 to tau per. Then we find that introduction rate from 0 to tau per is bounded below by this uh, scale divergence. In this, uh, at this time, both Q and P reaches the same for distribution, P tau per. So, uh, because uh, K divergence between two same states is zero, so the right hand side becomes this uh, K divergence. And because end production is always uh, non negative, we finally find uh, this uh, desired uh, entropy production bound uh, from in the application process. So, uh, key relation is the variation expression. We finally uh, derive this and end this talk. It's sufficient to prove this in relation. And the left hand side, uh, this one, is equal to this uh, formula. So, we <coughs> show that this is uh, non negative. First, uh, up by applying the master equation, we find this relation. We then, uh, using uh, this ex uh, relation, we take only the summation of i, then we find uh, this, and we uh, find uh, this expression. Then, we, uh, in this term, we just add in, uh, we, uh, <coughs> multiply and divide Rij, and we <coughs> use the definition of the uh, diagonal term at normalization condition, we find this. And we here are using uh, the <coughs> detailed balance condition, the two equilibrium distribution is <coughs> exchanged to the ratio uh, between the two transition matrices. Then, three terms are the same, Rij, 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 so we <coughs> have this bracket. And we see that this is x minus 1 minus log x. This is always non negative. And Rijpj, as with i not equal j, is always non negative. So we finally find that this is non negative. So this is the derivation of uh, the variation expression of entropy production. Okay, now we summarize the talk. In the first part, we uh, derive uh, the trade off relation between heat flux and the production rate. And using this, we derive a trade off relation between power and efficiency. In particular, this inequality claims that uh, <coughs> the finite power and current efficiency is incompatible. In the second part, we derive the bound on entropy production in the relaxation process. So, uh, in, <coughs> in the relaxation process, the dis uh, distance between the initial and final distribution bounds at the end of production. Thank you for listening. Uh, uh, in my sense, <laughs> maybe some uh, have a different opinion, but uh, the Landauer process and the uh, memory erasure is just the uh, isothermal compression process. So, of course, this is a one no uh, isothermal process. So, of course, we can apply, uh, for example, this, in, this relation, and we create uh, <laughs> some, uh, if we want to erase memory in a finite time, then we have a much uh, <laughs> dissipation. Uh, than the original <laughs> expectation. Uh, from, uh, this is derived from the quasi-static limit. Uh, we have but additional cost. Uh, 
of course, this is a lambda word ratio is not a relaxation, so we can't use this. So maybe, of course, we can derive this. Uh, but this is just one application. So of course, we want to realize a me memory ratio in the experiment. Then we should <laughs> use uh, this inequality too. Okay. Well, but this is theoretically this is just another application. So there are, there are several ways to uh, derive this work efficiency yeah. uh, trade-off relations. So for example, Cypher to Google show uh. 2018, so they show that it's similar um, inequality, but the uh, coefficient be be before eta c minus eta is a power fluctuation, something like this. So can you uh, derive such a, a Inequality from your your. Ah mm, uh, yeah, wait. Uh, and the power fluctuation appeared in the diaper to result, right? Uh, okay. uh, then uh, this thing is very similar, but uh, it's similar to. Uh, but maybe uh, okay. This is a kind of uh, a fluctuation of heat current and. <laughs> By extending this uh, type of division, uh, we can uh, rewrite this term uh, in terms of the heat, uh, fluctuation of heat current. So uh, I think in the Zypher's context, uh, the power fluctuation is almost the same as the current fluctuation. So uh, this is a very, we can consider that it is very similar. But uh, this, uh, the I think Zypher result is, the inequality is stronger than ours. But I think Zypher to the inequality is applicable only to stationary case. And so stationary systems and such the system such very detailed balance. Uh, this inequality also needs detailed balance, but this uh, inequality is satisfied for uh, non-stationary case. So uh, the appli applicability of <coughs> the inequality is, uh, I think, <coughs> the, uh, wider in uh, our inequality than the Zypher to one. This is so that this is their disadvantage and disadvantage. Disadvantage is that this inequality is weaker than the one, but advantage is applicability, wide applicability. And of course, the inequality with theta one have a much more wide applicability. But it is also much weaker. And this is still the advantage and disadvantage. So, yeah, so your result. Modify the dynamic uncertainty relation. Some dynamic uncertainty. I think this is n uh, not uh, because uh, because you uh, you define that the fluctuation theorem comes from a kind of time reversal symmetry, and this is also uh, come from a kind of time reversal symmetry. But uh, it is said that some like uncertainty relation is not. Uh, came from the time reversal symmetry, at least it's a strong, the best version. Uh, maybe uh, recently, uh, Hasegawa uh, to uh, derive a weaker version of some advanced that it comes from fluctuation theorem. Uh, then I think if maybe this type of relation can be derived, uh, uh, maybe connected to this inequality, but uh, the original version requires much more sophisticated ways, such as the large deviation principle of a, 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 or a, the explicit form of the rate function uh, in the derivation. So it is not easy to connect. Uh, I think the, the uh, applicability is again is narrow, but uh, their result is very strong. So, <laughs> This is not easy to connect. This a uh, weak and wide applicable ones. Okay. Uh, other question? Yeah, okay, if not, then let's thank the uh, speaker again. Okay, so uh